Welcome to the mini class this week. Our theme is on taking action. And I, I pulled this theme this week from a text called the Bhagavad Gita, which is um, one of the sort of favorite texts on yoga philosophy. Um, I, for me, it's sort of a standard along with the Yoga Sutras. And, um, and in, this, in this text, the Bhagavad Gita, one of the, the pieces of wisdom is around taking action. Right, so we can have all of the best intentions in the whole wide world, but if we don't actually do something towards our goal, we're not going to get anywhere. And the wisdom in the Bhagavad Gita says that we can act or we can not act, right? We can do nothing or we can do something. Either way, whether we do something or nothing, there's going to be an impact. There's going to be an effect out in the world. So the word karma literally means action and how our actions have a reaction in the world. And it, it's not like if we do something bad, we get something, you know, get smacked in the, in the head in return, but that our actions have some kind of repercussions in the world, whatever they may be. And so when we're, um, when we're kind of stuck and we're not acting, that act of not acting has repercussions in the world as well, right? So we're, we're moving forward one way or another, whether we're actually taking steps and walking on our path or whether we're sitting back and waiting to see where our path takes us or where that, you know, the flow of the river takes us. And not to say that, that you know, just sitting back is the wrong thing to do because sometimes it's absolutely the right thing to do. Sometimes not acting is what we need to do, right? You feel your anger come up and you just wanna say something really nasty and instead of acting, you don't act. And that has a whole different impact than if you were to act on that impulse. So. So not to say that acting or not acting is good or bad, but that we should decide, right? What are the outcomes we're looking for and how do we get them? Is it by acting or is it by not doing something? So I'm gonna invite you today to kind of go back to last week's theme. And we're going to, out of that theme, pull out one small piece of action that you could do ideally today, <laughs> but it could be you know, sometime this week. Um, but the sooner that you act, the more likely it is to happen um, towards that eventual goal. And what happens is we sometimes think we need to see the whole picture before we take a step on our path. And the fact is we don't need to see the whole picture. We just need to act, right? So taking that one step often will open more doors. It will open more possibilities. And then the next step becomes more clear. And then the next step. So it's not like we have to map out 20 steps ahead of time, one step is where we're going today. So we're gonna start seated. You can get comfortable. We'll start there and I'll see you on the mat. So the main thing for your seated position is that you're comfortable. And if you really need to lie down, if you've been sitting all day and you wanna do this beginning part lying down, you can do that as well. So really the main thing is that you're comfortable as we do this inquiry. So we're setting our intention checking in. In this session, we've been working with resilience and thriving. So a lot of the tools earlier in the session were just about calming our nervous system. And now we're looking at how do we thrive? Once we feel resilient, how do we thrive in our lives? How do we move forward with confidence and moving towards our goals? So take a moment to settle, coming back to some of those earlier resourcing tools. If you feel a little bit unsettled, you might start by just looking around the room and getting oriented to the space you're in. And if you feel comfortable to close your eyes and alternately you could close your eyes and turn your attention inward. And then tuning into a sense of grounding. So feeling where your body meets the earth or where your body maybe meets a chair that reaches the earth. So what is below you being drawn down by gravity? And how do you feel that interface between your body and the earth? So as you tune into grounding and felt sense, feeling yourself coming into the present moment, if you like, you can take a few breaths where you simply acknowledge and notice that you're breathing. We 
really letting yourself transition into this space, the space of your yoga practice, where we're inviting the attention to always come back to the present moment through all sorts of different various tools that we've been using. The breath, felt sense, grounding, Many other tools that we looked at. We'll just stop with those three for now. A few more breaths here. So as we start to settle, it's like letting a pool of water settle so that everything that's been in the water just settles to the bottom and the water becomes clear. Whatever clarity that you feel you've been able to connect with now, I invite you to, again, pose the question, what do I really want? So you've maybe been working with this question for a week now, maybe something has come up for you, maybe not. What do I really want? So if you have a, a clear vision of what that is, you can work with that today. And if you don't have a clear vision of what you really want, you might work with just taking action in any positive way, right? So some examples of doing one small positive thing for yourself could be, you know, drinking a little extra water today, or maybe adding a few more vegetables to your meal. It's something small and achievable. And if you have a goal in mind, if you've come up with something that you feel you really want, you can take a moment to imagine yourself having that. And then taking a moment to ponder, what is one small, tiny, infinitesimal step I could take toward that goal? What is one action that I could take today? Right, so if my, my bigger goal is to be more healthy and lose weight, my one small action today might be just making sure that I drink at least one extra full glass of water or replace some of the sweets with some fruit. It's a one achievable thing that you could do today as small as possible to take you on that first step towards your goal. Imagine yourself doing this thing. Picture yourself, hear yourself if there's any sounds. And we'll revisit this intention throughout the class today, but to really anchor it into our hearts, let's take the arms to the sides, reaching out, big breath in as you reach the arms up overhead, like you're gathering that intention from all around you, bringing the threads and the pieces together, hands together at your heart, pause there again, picture yourself doing this thing, this one small step. And then again, we'll take the arms to the sides, reach out and up like you're gathering this intention and bringing it into your heart, firmly planting it like a seed. And with one more breath, we'll water that seed, reaching up Good. and bringing your hands together at your heart. Good. Pause here for one more breath. Right, and then exhaling to release. So now if you're sitting on a chair or sitting um, on a cushion, you might want to just move that out of the way so your bum is right on the ground. You can use your hands to support you. Feet out in front of you, knees bent with the feet about shoulder distance or even a little wider apart. And we'll move the knees side to side. Just warming up the hips a little. Great. 
And you can come back to center and, and bring your feet in close to each other. And then you can lean back a little bit to help make this happen, but you're gonna bring one knee over the other and then sit up tall using your hands to support you. Take a few breaths here and notice any kind of stretch or sensation. You can try rounding your back a little and then sitting up again. Really finding that lift in the heart. <clears throat> and then we'll straighten the legs. <coughs> Give them a little shake. Great. And then leaning back to bend both knees again. You can lean back even a little more to lift the other leg and cross it over. And then again, you want to use your hands to support you to sit upright. And again, pause here for a moment and feel whatever stretch is happening now, whatever experience is happening now. And there may, there may or may not be much sensation here. So just notice what's true for you. And then again, you can release and give a little stretch. And then we'll take the feet and go from side to side with the feet. So straight legs, moving from the hips, side to side with your feet. Great. And then we'll come around onto all fours. You can get there however is convenient for you. And then from here, moving with that cat-cow motion. So inhale as you arch if you're coordinating your breathing. Exhale as you round, or you can just arch and round at a comfortable pace as long as you're breathing. And then try some circles, circling your hips from one heel to the other and back around and up. Take your time, again, tuning into how this feels, what you notice, what you're aware of. After you've gone a few times one way, try going the other way. See what you notice when you approach from the other direction. Right. And then if child's pose is comfortable, you can rest in child's pose. If not, finding another position, maybe having your hips a little higher, weight on your elbows if that's better for you. And breathing here. As you breathe, come back to your vision, your intention. Deeply imagining yourself taking this one small action. Great. And then when you're ready, we'll come back up to all fours. And I'm going to invite you to tuck your toes under and be really gentle with this movement, honoring whatever you discover in your feet as we shift the weight back toward the feet to invite a little stretch in the arches. Be gentle with your, with your toes. If you feel a lot of pressure on your toes, don't go back as far. So going back and forward a few times to just give the feet a little stretch. And if you feel like you want more, you can keep the toes tucked under and keep your weight back. And the more you lift your weight up over your feet, so you're sitting on your heels, the more you're gonna feel that stretch. So you're gonna modify in the way that feels right for you. Okay, taking the weight off, bringing it back as it feels good. Just giving your feet a little stretch. And then you can take the feet and take the tops of the feet to the ground and just give a little, like you're you know, patting the feet on the top of the ground, just waking up the energy in the tops of the feet. And then again, tuck your toes under, shift back. And then if this next stage is okay for you, you can come into a squat. If not, then you'll start to just make your way up to standing. Okay, if squatting is available to you, you're going to lift the knees. And then from your squat, you can lift your hips, keep your knees soft. And then from here, lifting the hands to the shins or knees, coming halfway up, bringing the breath in and then releasing it as you go forward. 
can pause here for a few breaths if this is a good position for you. Alternately, maybe elbows on your thighs may be a better option. And then as you're ready, you'll lift all the way up, reaching up overhead, bringing your palms together, bringing the hands back to your heart. And again, taking a moment to connect with your intention, your vision, the action that you're ready to take, one small step. Right from here, let's lift the arms, big breath in. Big circle around as you exhale. Coming back into the center, lifting. Exhale, big circle. Great, one more time. And this time, as your arms are coming to the sides, you're gonna bend your elbows and have the hands facing forward. Draw the elbows back, find a little lift in the heart. Right. And then as you exhale, bring your arms across your body to hold opposite shoulders. Let your elbows relax down, take a few breaths here. And if you like, if you want, you can actually draw your chin down a little, bend your knees a little, round your upper back, breathe into the space of your upper back. Maybe even rock your elbows a little bit one way and the other to open up a bit more space. And then here's if you want to notice which arm is on top as we open wide again, elbows down, heart lifting, breathing into that beautiful space around the heart, and then exhaling. Next exhale, hands come around again, um, elbows more or less stacked, but they may not be quite, just whatever works for you. Again, you can soften your knees, lower your head. We'll create a little more space between your shoulder blades. Rocking a little side to side if that feels good for you. Right, and then coming back to the center, we'll inhale and open the arms wide. We'll take a couple of breaths here, feeling that openness across the heart. Right, exhaling to release. And a few rotations with your shoulders now. Right, and give a little shake. So we'll work with the legs a little bit now. So we did a full squat earlier. Some of you may have, maybe not all of you. Um, and now we're gonna work with a half squat. So you can reach the arms up overhead, breathing in. As you exhale, bring your hands to your thighs and come into a half squat. And then lift, and we'll repeat that. So moving dynamically, as you sit, think about hips going back, Chest staying lifted. Inhale, lift, exhale, sitting. Great, right, this time go ahead and stay. And as you're staying, I invite you to bring your hands to your hips to get them out of the way and shift your weight to one side. You can pick up the other foot if you like, or leave your toes on the ground, and then shift to the opposite side, back to center, sitting down, and then we'll lift all the way up. Exhale and release. So one more time with that half squat, so inhaling to lift, Exhale to sit. Okay. We'll sh bring hands to the hips just to get them out of the way. When we do the eagle pose in a moment, we won't have the arms in the way. So shifting onto one foot, you can either just lift that leg, you could straighten it if you like, or you can try crossing it over as we did sitting. When you release, coming back to stand, you can give a little shake. We'll just try it on the other side as well. So reaching up with the breath in, exhale, coming down, you can 
bring your hands to your hips and, and use that to really help remind you to find that bit of arch in the lower back, lift in the heart, shift your weight the other side. Again, you could keep your toes down, lift them, or maybe straighten the leg, or cross it over. Or you keep breathing. And when you're ready, just standing to release. And again, a little shake. All right, so this, uh, probably you're familiar, some of you at least, with this pose. So we're going to do this sort of modified version of Eagle. Um, and Eagle is this wonderful pose of inaction, right? It's a still pose, but obviously when we think of eagles, the eagles also fly. And so in this pose, it's really about bringing the energy into focus, right? So an eagle will sit, it will wait, it will watch, and then it will act decisively, right? So we're in that waiting, watching kind of phase in the pose. And as we come out of the pose is when we come into our action, into that first act that we could do towards our goal, which is, you know, for the eagle, it's just raising the wings and getting ready, right? So when you're ready to try eagle with me, we'll take a breath in, reaching up. Right, we're going to come to the half squat, elbows to the sides. From here, breath in, reach back with the elbows. Exhale, cross the arms over the chest so that the elbows are stacked as much as possible, hands on opposite shoulders. If you're familiar with the full eagle and you wanna do the arms of the full eagle, feel free, but we'll stay with this for now. Whichever arm is on top, so for me it's right arm, I'm gonna shift my weight to the right leg. And then again, you can stay here, just come to your toes or lift the leg, maybe stretch it out or cross it over. Keep the standing leg bending so you're even squatting down a bit more, chest lifting, breathing, find your focus. And from that place of focus and determination and intention, we're gonna spread our wings, lifting the knee, lifting the arms and releasing. Good, coming back to mountain pose. Take a couple of breaths. If you want, you can just release and shake that off, that effort of the, of the eagle. And then we'll do the other side. So we're, we'll take a breath in, reach up. Exhale, half squat as the elbows come down. Breathing in, opening the heart. Exhale, other arm on top. So for me, it's left arm this time. Let your shoulders drop down. Shifting your weight to the side of whichever arm is on top. So for me, it's left. And then choosing, just lift, straighten, maybe cross over. You can always bring your toes down if you need to for balance. Sinking down, lifting the heart, finding your focus, getting ready. And then when you're ready, we're gonna act by spreading our wings, lifting up and releasing back to Tadasana. <sighs> Beautiful. Let's do a little shake, release. And then we're gonna do a couple of forward bends just to release any tension from the standing pose. So reaching up with the breath in, bend your knees, sweep forward, let your head release as much as is right for you. And then come all the way up. Repeating this a few times, going at your own pace. Right. And then eventually when you're in that forward bend again, you can go ahead and stay. And if the squat worked for you on the way up, you can try it again on the way down. Otherwise, just finding your way down in any way that works for you. So from your squat, you can either lower to all fours and then come to lie down, or if it feels safe for you to simply release down, maybe using a hand to support you, you can go ahead and come down and make your way right down onto your back. And here you might bring your, 
So bring your hands onto your body where you can feel your breath. Legs can be bent or straight now. We'll take a couple of minutes. Just coming back to the breath, back to the sense of the earth beneath you. Tuning into your exhalation. Letting go of the effort of that mini practice. Coming back into a sense of stillness. A sense of groundedness. Following the breath. Breathing in fully, exhaling fully, a few more breaths to really anchor in this intention. You might imagine yourself again taking this one small action. And then letting all of that go, and we'll spend just another minute or two simply being, resting, being with ourselves, integrating the practice. If it helps, you can follow the breath with your imagination, or you can simply rest here. Now, if you're feeling like you'd like to rest a little longer and you've got the space to do so, you can stay a little longer. If you're ready to move on, you can start to think about bringing your knees up in toward your chest, giving your back a little stretch, maybe rocking a bit side to side to massage the lower back or perhaps circling around your knees. And then if it feels good, you can stretch your arms and legs toward the ceiling and give them a good shake. Mm. Right, and then bringing your knees back in and to the floor. And then as you're ready again, you can roll over onto your side. Use your opposite hand to support you. And if you're not ready to come up right, that is also fine. So we try to keep this mini class to around a half an hour, but if you want to extend it by adding in your own um, movements or meditation here, then absolutely feel free. And if you're ready to move on with your day, you can come to sit and bring your palms together. Again, creating that intention and moving your intention into a commitment if that feels right for you. Committing to this one act that you can do toward the goal, taking you to what you really want. Namaste.